Welcome to the Daybird Friday. My name is Michael Schimke. I'm the CEO of Scafree. And um, yeah, we uh, essentially do the uh, Data Vault Fridays here to allow you, the audience, the public, to ask questions about Data Vault, um, about cloud computing, uh, big data, anything data driven, data related, essentially, is, is great uh, to hear you. Um, you can use the chat here in the client. You can use the QA to ask live questions. You can even raise your hand. I'm happy to give you a voice. It's always good to hear some other voices than your own. And uh, you can also use a form, which I will show you the link for after today's session. Um, if we receive multiple questions, I would cherry pick them. And, and it's, yeah, it's time limited. So we have roughly 10, 15 minutes uh, for the question, essentially. And if there would be no questions asked, I'm working again on the cluster. So it's making progress. So let's see. All right. Um, good. And more people are coming in. It's great. So um, we received a question here from the audience. Let me just uh, show it to you. Uh, there you go. It's essentially on the Lambda architecture. Um, essentially, uh, they are comparing the Data 2.0 architecture with the Lambda architecture and, and want to know what's the difference, what the similarities, essentially. Let me, let me just draw this for you. OK, um, one second, the whiteboard. OK, so in the Lambda architecture, we have essentially a data source. And we have a, uh, they call it um, fast lane or speed layer. And the batch layer. Um, the batch layer is essentially used for cleaning up data, um, filling the gaps, and so on, maybe pre aggregating the data. Um, the problem is that that takes time. So that's typically done on a classical system, let's say Hadoop, on a more batch driven system. Um, but then they want, also want to get the real-time data much faster, right? So they use a speed layer, let's say on Kafka, to um, process the real-time messages, but accepting that you might have dirty data, that you might have um, gaps in your messages and so on. That's what it is. But you, you get the data faster, essentially, right? That's the idea. And then you have a essentially a dashboard where you can zoom, where you first consume the, the real-time feed, and then when the data arrives from the from the batch layer, you replace the um, the uh, the real time feed in the dashboard by the batch by the results from the batch layer. Cleans it afterwards, essentially. That's the idea. But it's not the case. I mean, in both layers, you might apply business logic the way you want, and so on. That's the that's the idea. Now, when we compare this to the data world architecture, in the data world architecture, we also have a source system, and it's true. Um, most source systems, even real time, you get data in two different ways. We typically get the real time feed from the system, but we can also get the batch data um, overnight, for example, or via other means. So we typically have both both streams as well: the data stream in, in real time and the data flow from the source in, um, let's say, not non real time patterns, whatever that means. Um, and then what we do is in the architecture, in the first layer. We consume, first of all, the batch data. So the batch data is typically consumed into um, um, files, Avro files, packet files on a data lake. Um, that's number one. We just follow our, our standard pattern here. We have the raw data vault, where we break down the, uh, the incoming data set into hub-sync satellites. We have a business vault, where we then attach the business logic. And we have the, the let's say, one information mart here where we create the star schema, the Snowflake schema for the dashboard later on. What you want to achieve here is that the, those layers here are virtualized, especially in real time. Those should be virtualized because then when you query those layers, you will get the, uh, the current set of the, 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 sorry, the data essentially. Now, for the, for the real time feed, it comes from the same system, more or less, or maybe some other system, it doesn't really matter for us. We have a message queue that typically gets the data first, uh, the real-time messages. This message queue sends the data then to a worker role, some C-sharp code, maybe um, Java code, Python code, uh, maybe, maybe Amazon Kinesis or something, where the message is then being processed. And we call this first worker role the, the raw data vault processor or loader or something, loader typically. And the sole purpose of this, of this functionality is to break down these real-time messages 
into HubSync's or well, into business keys, relationships, and descriptive data, and then load that directly into the raw data layer. We also load it into the data lake. If this is a data lake, right? We load it into a data lake for the data scientists. Just the real-time message, dump it into, read, uh, into the data lake. Typically, you would partition it a bit, like uh, create smaller, small buckets of, let's say, a couple of thousand messages um, um, uh, per bucket. So the, uh, the, the, the query pro process for the data scientists is, is a bit, mo it's a bit um, more efficient, essentially. That's the idea. So bucket here. But that's it. So this is just a copy of the, of the real-time feed for the data scientists if they don't want to go for the raw data model, for example. Um, but it takes, this one is the first priority. This is the second priority here from a loading perspective. So first goes into raw data vault because we need that stream for the dashboards later on. Now, the, the patterns we teach in, in the training, it's relatively straightforward how we break down the, the message into HubSync satellites, how we load the HubSync satellites on the fly. And then what you do is, in many cases, you want to enrich the real-time feed. So let's say you get, uh, there's, there's real-time data coming in, and uh, uh, let's say from uh, car sensors, and you know, in the message, you only have the sensor ID, maybe some location information, like a longitude, latitude, maybe some timestamp and the speed of the vehicle or something. And in your CM system, you know which vendor purchased your sensor. Uh, you might need, you might know the model, you might know some customer details and so on. So you have some additional data from the batch, right? From uh, from your other CM system, for example. Um, so you want to enrich that or perform some aggregations on the fly, aggregating, let's say, uh, messages per time window, for example, um, identifying where the car was in the last 50 minutes, that kind of stuff. So what we do is in real time, we have a business vault processor, another worker role. Um, yeah. DV processor. That's another C sharp or Python code, whatever, it depends on your architecture and on your platform. Instead of reading from here, we need a trigger for that. So we don't have that. What we do instead is we're reading, we're just pushing the real time message, or wait, sorry, we're pushing the message forward, but there must be a message queue involved for that. So you have another message queue. This is called the raw MQ, and this is called the, um, yeah, os, no, sorry. This is called the source MQ, and that's the raw MQ. Um, so you push the incoming raw message to the next message queue, and this one forwards it. The, the only purpose of this message queue is to forward the raw message over to the, um, to the business vault processor. So the business vault processor now can decide on every incoming message what to do with it. Can we ignore it? Can we uh, dump it? Uh, or do we need to aggregate it? So do we have to calculate the window, for example, time window? Um, do we have to perform a lookup? It's just the sharp code or Java code. So you could just perform a lookup and get more data from here, from the raw data vault, from the, from the business vault, it into the business world processor to enrich the message, for example, or use it in your business logic. That's where your business logic happens, where you implement your, implement your real-time business logic, essentially. And then um, you essentially forward, then you, then you produce some result, some information, which means we put that on a message topic now, the resulting in, uh, message, and that's the information info topic. That's where we essentially publish the topic, the, the message to the topic, and that topic is then used by the, by the um, dashboards to present the information, like a line chart, that kind of stuff. What we typically do is we have a size limit. So these messages, um, both are message queues, but also message topics, they typically have a size limitation. Typically, it's not, not that small. So you, you can, might have a couple of uh, maybe 256 kilobyte or something but it also depends on the technology, also on the speed, because, I mean, the data must be processed, right? The smaller it is, the faster it, you, you can forward the messages. So in order to keep the messages small, you might, um, let's say you want to produce a line chart or have some um, traffic lights on the dashboard. If something breaks, you want to show a red traffic light, that kind of stuff, or some, some raise an alarm or something. What, you, what we do a lot is, instead of sending all the information to the dashboard in, inside the message, we just inform the, the dashboard using this information message that something happened. 
And based on the message, on the message topic, the dashboard knows, the dashboard is down here, right? The dashboard knows what to query. So it, it receives the message here. And yes, you need some special tools for that. Um, it, it, that support receiving um, uh, messages, right? But they're, they're out there, some real-time dashboard. And um, this is a dashboard. And the idea then is that this dashboard, based on the incoming message, can then decide to retrieve data, or sorry, information from either, uh, from typically from the information mark. That's where you prepare this. So you have an, a star schema somewhere in the information mark, which would be created now from the... Um, from the dashboard application itself. That depends, all that depends a bit on your, um, on your dashboarding tool. Um, in some cases, you have, if, if it's uh, really about performance, you might need to build this by yourself. Um, sometimes you have applications that receive these messages and then the application in the front end, let's say for online banking, or whatever, shows some um, uh, queries to the data warehouse to get to pull the information that was apparently changed. It was a real-time feed set. The cool thing is, because we're pushing a data, both the data, but also typically the, the, um, so the, the, uh, this worker role here also pushes the results if required into the business world. So everything is or can modify, let's say. It can modify the business world. Let's say calculating something and putting those, those results into the business world. So these, um, these worker roles, I mean, they have to push the raw data into the raw data world. And they typically store also some of this of this uh, of the business uh, uh, of the results from the business rules in the business world. Um, so when the message hits your dashboard, the data, at least the raw data, has already arrived in the enterprise data warehouse. So when you query it, it's already there. There's some latency involved here, right? Um, that's why I'm struggling here. If you really want to write the results from the business rules into the business world, depends on your latency requirements how fast you need the results. Um, yeah, so that's, it, but you have the choice. You can either put the results into the message, into the real-time message, and then leave, leave it for a dashboard to retrieve more details maybe from the data warehouse. Um, or you just really just notify the system that something happened. Um, what we typically do is, let's say you want to produce a line chart, you want to have a moving line chart where the line chart is get, gets updated every second. But then you also have late arriving messages. So what I would like to do is I would like to update in the dashboard, let's say the last 240 seconds. I want to update those again and again every second. Um, so this payload, 240, like uh, that's uh, five, six minutes, um, six minutes um, of, um, of information, right? Those 240 snapshot timestamps. And that payload becomes too large typically because I need to give a uh, essentially a sequence, not the, not the timestamp, but sequence value uh, for the um, for the data point in, a, in the diagram, right? And I need to provide the value itself. Maybe I need to provide some other information like colors, that kind of stuff. So sooner or later, this payload becomes too large. What we do is instead we prepare the data in the in the uh, enterprise data wells using a bridge table, for example, in real time producing the rich bridge table, inserting those records, and then inform the dashboard, hey, please query the bridge table via the fact uh, view. Query it because they, there's a new, a new line that you need to produce. And then the dashboard retrieves the line chart, or well, the data points for the line chart from the fact view on top of the bridge table, and that's being essentially redrawn on the, on the dashboard. That's how you, why you see a essentially a... Um, um, yeah, a, 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 a moving line chart all the time because we redraw it all the time, correcting it all the time. Um, I, have an, I have an example here. Let me just share it to you. Uh, one second for that. That's what I didn't prepare, actually. I showed it in a, in a training once in a while. Um, from a customer, essentially from a customer project, where, where it was allowed to create a um, a video from the from the dash from the real time dashboard. It was one of my first uh, real time dashboards. That's why it was uh, something special, and I took it took a picture uh, image from it. From it. Okay, uh, stop talking. Find it. Um, so there's a comment here from Alex. It doesn't have to be an external message queue. Same logic works pretty well with tasks and streams and snowflake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, correct. Um, so the um, the tooling it really depends on the tooling. So uh, what kind of tools you're using? Um, if you need a message queue or not, you need the concept of this message queue and the topic essentially. The message queue 
distributes the workload, right? You might have multiple worker role instances where you um, implement the processing of the real-time messages, the application of business rules, and so on. So um, that's what I need. And then the message topic distributes the message to all the, uh, the information message to all the dashboards. So that those concepts I need, if it's a message queue topic or it's maybe streams and tasks and Snowflake, and what you mentioned here, Alex, is um, streaming tables and Databricks, I don't really care, right? So it depends on the technology stack you're on, uh, which technology I use in the end. Um, continue, stop sharing this one. So this is essentially the, the dashboard we built. Ah, come on, move it. One second, I'm struggling here with the chat. Okay, and that's essentially a dashboard where we produced, um, th that was built on, on Azure essentially. And uh, when, you, when you look at these lines, th that's really based on a fact view on a bridge table. That bridge table gets into, I mean, it's relatively low volume because the bridge is on the target granularity. One record per second, essentially, right? Well, you can select some dimension. So uh, it's a bit more of, of, of records, but it's, it's not a high volume, essentially, because it's not for every incoming message. It's pre-aggregated a lot. And this was all done in the, um, in the business world. Uh, processor. The, um, when you look at the line charts here, you see that they get corrected sometimes. Um, when, when, it, when it passed second, there you go. That essentially, there, that was the late arriving messages that we updated in the uh, bridge table by adding additional records to the bridge, to the aggregation. And then um, the, uh, the, the dashboard gets a notification message once a second, essentially. Hey, something happened because, well, what, every second something happens. And the system pulls the, um, the information from the line chart, essentially. That's the idea. All the 240 data points from the, um, from the fact view, essentially, based on the dimension selected. That's the, that's the other thing. Um, and then those boxes here, that's also based on notification messages where the system tells the dashboard that some port, it's a voice of IP uh, provider here, uh, that some ports in the system failed and you need to update some of the cells essentially. Um, it might just give you the cell that, or it might just give you, hey, something happened on this diagram and you need to find via query what changed. I mean, you just query everything again, or it will give you the cell what has been changed and you just update that particular cell. That's, um, that's uh, depending on your design and also requirements for real latency and so on. All right, um, cool. That's, um, that's essentially, so yeah, the focus was on the Lambda architecture. I mean, we don't implement the, the uh, we follow the concept. So ingest the raw data first, and then afterwards you apply the business logic, right? So we follow that not only in the batch load, but also in the real-time feed. And then we combine it very early on. So the raw data is getting absorbed into the raw data world first. So it becomes available for uh, integrating essentially, right? That's the idea. And you can, and then you have to, you can choose if you want to query the data from both the batch and the raw data from the real-time feed. If you want to query that in, let's say, uh, daily or hourly or something, then you just go the standard way of uh, via the uh, information marts, the virtual ones in, in the best sense, where you have business logic in the business world, in a, in a database and so on, and you just present it in a tool. Or if you need the, the, the information much faster in real time, in actual real time, right? Then you have to really work with another um, a message topic in the end that informs the dashboard, which also means that you have to have some tools that are able to um, use those message topics, right? Where you can essentially um, uh, um, get, where the dashboard can get notified by another system that something happened or you want to do something with it and so on. And that depends also on your tool stack. So um, yeah, it depends. So we have built systems um, with, um, this, is a cust this is custom build, right? That, that's an ASP.NET page, uh, custom build. Um, you, you might use, uh, I think Power BI should work. They, they have uh, support for that. Uh, yes, we are um, the, um, in Azure, the, uh, I forgot the name, the, the service bus stuff, data, data hub or something. No, uh, I forgot the name, but they, they, on, on serv based on service bus, they have this um, technology where they can um, process large ones of real-time data. And it's possible to ingest into or use in Power BI. Um, Clipfolio is a tool where you can send real-time messages. It's a cloud dashboarding tool, essentially, as we use internally. Um, yeah, so it, it really depends, essentially, on the tool stack, uh, what, what, how you essentially actually build the system, right? Cool. Okay, so we talked about differences. Um, yeah. 
That's a good question. Um, all right, if you have a question like this, let me just share the last slide here. Um, use this form, uh, use sfr.ee slash DB Friday. Um, yeah, that's a form where you can type in your question, type in, uh, ap uh, upload some attachments if you want. And then, um, yeah, uh, um, I'll pick up the question essentially in, in one of the like, next sessions. All right, weather is picking up. So um, hope you enjoyed the session today. Uh, enjoy your, um, your, um, your weekend. And I hope to see you next Friday. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining today. If you'd like to discuss this further, give us a call on the number below here and we're happy to discuss this with you. See you next time. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.